Good morning, friends. Welcome back to another edition of the Daily Devo. I'm Bob Branch. I'm your host this morning. And we have been talking about being co-workers with God. That is, we're working together with him. We talked about the spiritual gifts and different things. And I'm, we're in a, a little bit of a new track on this and talking about this thing that we call divine appointments. That is that God sets up things for us to be able to move with him during the day, during each day and during the larger periods of time. And we call these things divine appointments because they're on his calendar and he wants us to participate with him. He's orchestrating these things for us to jump in with him. We are in day four of our uh, 21 day generosity challenge. And this all goes together of us becoming givers, generous givers and jumping in with God in this. So I want to ask you to ask God, Lord, would you give me one chance today for the next you know, 20, uh, well, 21 days altogether, would you give me a chance, Lord, every day to calibrate myself to and to give and to be generous with others with the things that I have in my life, my time, my energy, my money, all, this, all these different kinds of things. Well, when we're talking about divine appointments, it's really important kind of coming back to this, how does a divine appointment work? There's a number of assumptions that go with this, and this all goes together with we're God's co-workers in this. The assumption number one is that God is always working. It's what Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 17. He said, my father is always working and I too am working. And then he goes on to uncover a little bit more about what that means. But basically, the offense in this whole story with Jesus saying this in John 5 is that God is working on the Sabbath. God is working on the Sabbath. Nobody is supposed to be working on the Sabbath. But Jesus says, my father's working on in times when you don't think he's working, he's working, and I'm working alongside of him. And that's exactly what the Lord wants us to know about divine appointments, is that we're working alongside of him and that he is working all the time. So that's assumption number one. Assumption number two is he has designed you to join him in work that's already in progress. That is from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, where it says we, Paul writes, that we are God's workmanship, his masterpiece, his, his handiwork. God has his hands all over us for you know, creating us in Christ to do good works that he has designed for us to do and prepared for us to do years beforehand, you know, from the, before the foundation of time. So he's designed you to, to join him in his work. And it's exactly the way that Jesus worked. Jesus worked in partnering with God, just the same way as you and I do. So God is always at work. He's designed you to join him in his work. The third assumption is that you don't have to create the work. I think that this is one of the most releasing and freeing things for me is that I think that a lot of times in Western Christendom, that is in, in Europe and in, in the States, uh, that we have this idea that we got to work really hard for God and God, we just want you to come and bless what we're doing. And frequently we will get into the business of doing all kinds of things and asking God to bless them rather than asking God, what are you doing? And we want to do what you're blessing. So instead of God blessing what we're doing, we want to do, Lord, what you're blessing. And that's a whole different orientation but it's really important to say that you don't have to create the work. You have to join the work that God is already doing. I think this takes a huge load off of your shoulders when it comes to sharing your faith with others, when it comes to doing all kinds of things that are works of compassion that God is already working. He's calling us to join him in that work that he's already doing. It's not mine to create. It's God's creative work. And now that doesn't mean that God won't put something on your heart and you have to go and you have to work really hard to do it and, and work at it and persevere in it. That will happen quite frequently. But still, the idea is, God, we're not, we don't want you to bless what we're doing. We want to do what you're blessing. That's the third assumption. The fourth assumption is that then you join him in his work. That is when you notice it, when you see him working just the way that Jesus did, then you join him in his work. You're, you don't have to whip it up. You don't have to get, you know, work really hard and, oh, you know, and just try to get all, um, what, what, what we have called in the in years past, soulishly involved in everything, that we, we are so involved in all the work that we could do this without God. And honestly, and frankly, I think that there's a lot of the work that happens in Christendom, in Christianity in the West today, where we are working and if God didn't show up, it wouldn't matter that we just think that this is, just, we just think that this is the work that we have to be doing. 
There's a problem with that. If you can, if God can just adjourn from your work and not show up and everything still go on as normal, that means that we're not working in cooperation with him. That's a very startling idea. But I think that this is something that God continues to want to say to us, those of us that are Christians in the West, is that God is challenging our do, 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 and saying, would you join me, join me, join me, look for work already in progress and join me in work already in progress. And then lastly, the way that Jesus said it in John 5, 19, is he said, the son, speaking of himself, can do nothing of himself. He can only do what he sees the father doing. For the father loves the son and shows him all that he does. So here's the deal. All of it is love. All the work that God is doing is loving work. All the work that God is doing is love works. All the work that God is doing is turning you more and more into love. He is making you a better lover of people like he loves people. He is inviting you and I into that loving work. And so, and Jesus says, the father shows me what he's doing because he loves me. And all of this is the work out of love, through love, and bringing love to a world that is loveless. This is such beautiful stuff. But these are the assumptions of how a divine appointment works, that God is always working, he's already at work, that he's designed you to join him in work already in progress, that you don't have to create the work, you don't. You join him in his work, and it's all love. That's what I believe that the Lord wants us to be reminded of as we jump in and we'll talk about these things and all of these things and how they play out in our normal lives, but you today are God's coworker, you are. You might be thinking, wait, you don't know me, Bob. I'm like, I don't have to. I know that, that if you are listening in on this, you are already loved by God. You are already made on purpose. You're already made to be an instrument, to be the glove on the hand of the master, to be that love and to bring that love. That's you and that's me. I love you. I'm praying for you. Let's join together in this. Remember to ask the Lord today, Lord, would you give me an opportunity, at least one opportunity today, to give generously to someone of something that I have. Until next time, thanks for joining me.